the spooning, I think is, I think the spoon nailing is important to mention because this is often related to some type of an iron issue. It could be something bigger, could be thyroid, but I've heard of people that the nail is, I mean, I guess that's why they call it spooning, but the nail kind of curves up at the tip. Like you could almost yep. ride a skateboard ramp off of the nail. And then I'll usually just run a basic blood panel just to look at thyroid and different like ferritin, iron saturation. A lot of times you'll see stuff off. Now, as you mentioned, this stuff doesn't get fixed overnight. So I can't Takes say, I can't say directly. Yes, we saw this woman had low ferritin. So we gave her something to boost ferritin and then the spooning went away. This is literally something you have to track with your clients and patients over like a two to three year period to really make it better. Yeah, exactly. So with the spooning stuff, right, if we see low iron, that's going to be like a number one. So a vegan vegetarian, we see a woman that may be having excessive menstruation, right, bleeding more than three or four days, three to four tampons per day. Um, low iron, you know, we're run, we're, we'll be testing ferritin, we'll be testing iron saturation, we'll be testing TIBC, UIBC, iron serum. And if we see some of these nutrients low, maybe even B vitamins low, maybe we have a intrinsic factor pernicious anemia happening and we can't absorb b12 because you need intrinsic factor to absorb b12 even if you're consuming it we may want to look at you know more higher quality supplemental b12 that's sublingual and methylated obviously we may also want to add extra iron or liver glandular in there we may want to look at fixing the underlying issue because that low iron could be caused from estrogen dominance that's causing excess of bleeding so a lot of times this could be e easily from hormones too Wow. Okay. So let's, let's say that again, cause that's, that's a pretty profound thing. So you said iron deficiency due to estrogen dominance and the estrogen dominance you're saying is going to be linked to excessive bleeding. Yeah. That's a bleeding. So if we see more than four days, five days of bleeding, but more importantly, greater than four or so tampons per day, you know, that could be a sign that we're bleeding too much and we're losing a lot of blood that way. Again, men don't have that problem, but you know, on the hemochromatosis side, there could be the excess iron, but I'm more worried about the the low iron because that's going to be, a, in my opinion, a really big deal breaker because you're going to be really fatigued. You won't be able to carry oxygen and your mitochondria will be really, really stressed. Yeah. So if you go up a flight of stairs and you're just winded, you're like, oh. I mean, and it's not just you out of breath. It seems like you're not getting enough oxygen. It could be related to that anemia issue and you want to investigate. Yeah, exactly. Paler skin too is another big sign as well lower energy. What about, then, I remember there being something about your hands where you take the palm of your hand, you kind of bend your fingers back. Aren't the lines in your hand, they're supposed to go more red to where you yeah. can see the blood flow but, versus. Yeah, they'll go more red, which is a sign of just better circulation. So if you take your hand like this and you see the, the lines here, see how they get redder. But if you're but anemic, I'm guessing you may not get as much red color in the lines. Yeah, because the heme, the heme portion of the hemoglobin has that kind of red or more pinky tone to it. So when that hemoglobin is low, that pinky tone's less. So you have that more of that pale kind of outlook. So you won't have that, you know, that the rosy, you know, if your skin's more fair or white skin, you won't have that like rosiness to it. It just kind of stays pale. Yeah. Once again, so that's more of like a, Hey, here's a free at home test. You bend your, mm -hmm. bend your fingers back, look at the lines in the palm of your hand. And if they don't go red, maybe it's related. Do a blood, do a blood panel and figure it out. Yep, exactly. So let's go talk about some other nails here. So we have a couple other nails I wanted to talk about. Uh, of course we have clubbing as well. So when we see clubbing, it's literally, it looks like a little hoof at the end where you see a little curvature at the end of the nail. And a lot of times that's from oxygen deficiency. So that could be from extreme low iron. That uh, could be from a lot of respiratory distress, whether it's like sleep apnea or some kind of like just COPD, just you're not able to really take on oxygen appropriately. And then that low oxygen level can really cause that clubbing effect. So you could see it with lung issues. You could see it with kidney issues, liver issues, heart issues, um, dietary, you know, IBS issue, immuno issues. Uh, like AIDS, things like that. But a lot of times there's some inability to transfer and carry oxygen appropriately in the body. Makes sense. So you're looking at bigger picture pathology. People that have that level of clubbing, they're already going to be on the conventional medicines radar as some kind of a diagnosis already being there. So mm -hmm. you work on stabilizing that, but then you want to get to the root issue, especially if you have like you, see, you can see clubbing with some autoimmune issues too. And autoimmunity, obviously, lots of inflammation in the body. So you, you, know, you stabilize with the conventional medical docs, and then you work on getting to the root cause after. Yeah, I would say autoimmunity could be 
linked to any of these, wouldn't you? I mean, because think about if you've yep, got autoimmunity that, let's say you've got Hashimoto's and now your thyroid slowing down. We know that hypothyroidism could cause some of these nail issues as well. So, yep. so I would just say if, if you got messed up nails and you're autoimmune, you could blame it as, as that being a, a piece of the puzzle. Yeah, and also pitting nails too. We'll see that's associated with psoriasis, which is autoimmunity. Um, also, writer syndrome as well. So a lot of pitting nails, which these conditions have an effect on connective tissue. We look at autoimmunity as well. So anytime we see pitting nails, or even just the 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 clubbing nails, or any type of nail issue, autoimmunity is so big because the gut interplays. And once you start messing up iron and fat soluble vitamins and good fat digestion and protein digestion and B vitamin absorption, especially B12, you could see a lot of these physical presentations with the nails. It's totally possible.